So here's the MWO unit from RT17. This, I believe, is built by Zvonimir Rudomino, um, maybe over in uh, Croatia. Um, he used to go by Lighty in energeticform.com and uh, helped me out quite a bit with uh, different stuff in the past. Uh, he builds a lot of the, uh, the replicas for the Tesla Museum over there. And I think he was the first one to build a commercially available uh, multi-wave, Lakovsky multi-wave oscillator based on the Kassieler's book. And um, this one is built in the spirit of the original units that were available back in the 1940s or, or whatever year that these were operating in, in clinics. And so this would be the pulse modulator that the practitioner would stand behind while somebody would be sitting in a chair out in between the coils. Um, so we have a volt amp meter on the input here, treatment but uh, indicator, ready indicator, it's all key locked. Um, here's a timer, this is adjustment, spark gap adjustment, I guess emergency stop button, start stop. This is the case, pretty heavy duty, very very well made. Um, inside, uh, looks like the Variac is a 230 volt unit. Um, it works on 110, 110 volts. Uh, Bruce brought this over here so we can troubleshoot it. It might just be some fuses. Uh, we found some blown out fuses in the back, little short, like three quarter inch long, 250 volt ones. Um, hopefully that's all that it is. Because um, if Lighty built this, I. I would uh, highly doubt that there would be anything wrong uh, mechanically or electrically inside and blowing a fuse is not that big of a deal it's got a uh, hour meter here so it's got about looks like 72 hours on it nope, 7 um, oh 7.2 <laughs> okay 7.2 7. this is a spark gap comes with uh, replacement tungsten it's got a fan blowing into the sealed box and here's a duct that's Spezia zone out the bottom. Um, this goes to the Variac right here on this bar. Right down to the Variac. This is a spark gap adjustment coming in here to adjust the uh, the gap. That's the yeah. That's the timer. That's a transformer there. So this thing weighs about uh, 350 pounds or something. The case, the, the case alone is very, very heavy. This thing is pretty rugged and well built. Did cost about 25000 by the time Bruce got it to Seattle. That's uh, for the unit plus shipping. These are the, this is the tra so-called transmitter coil. Um, that's primary, secondary. He's got the rings. These ones are, are strung. So it's adjustable. It can slide up and down the bar. So this one basically stays stationary where it's at. And this is one that you can roll back and forth. And so this would be the receiver one. And he has the uh, windings. Like this would be to balance, I guess, the copper mass. Uh, with the transmitter, but it's bypassed because the connector would come in between those and would tap directly to the uh, uh, secondary uh, resonator coil. Also slides up and down on the the stand. So just plugs in the regular um, 110 volt outlet. That's a little fuse box, little fuse holder down there, and the receptacle, off, main off and on switch. This is nice and shielded here with like a Teflon coated uh, coax that goes into the, uh, the output there. Really nice. So we'll pop in some fuses and see if that does it. If we can find some.
No. Not feeling the love. Okay. Okay, we'll switch it to the other. So we need. All right, now it's working. So we need to get smaller on our spark gap so we get something. What's the rating of that? Two amp. Yeah, that's rated at 250 volts. Okay. So now. Well, that's great because I didn't want to troubleshoot that looking inside there. We are to. <laughs> it's, hard, it, it that it's, hard, it's hard to get back into there unless you dismantle it. Well, I that that box back there looked like it might be sealed. There we go. Feel free to. So maybe 20 volts or something. That's the Bariac. Two amps. this way. At the same setting? To be honest, I don't know. I haven't okay. played with this one as much. I know that online, on this one, you could get like mm -hmm. three or four inch. So then the other thing. So has this always been this way with the, with the smaller workout? I mean, with the no. smaller. So this normally would pull like what your other one did? Yeah. Okay. It just has to be cranked up more. Yeah. Okay, you're up, you're up to about 890. So now I gotta. Yeah, that's better. So I just need to get a bigger spark gap. Sounds like some little bit intermittent. You need to put more power into it. So that's three amps at 100 volts. Three amps, 100 volts. Yeah, let's try that. I get a bright white in the center. So, you know, I'll tell you something odd. Could do that again. My hand heats up on the bowl. Oh, no. Okay. I could have something to do with it. I just wiped my hand off with a wet wipe. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that's good This isn't one a full one of the strips either. So yeah, so this is a this is a broke strip. It doesn't ha it doesn't go all the way to the middle, but um, we can see that the spacing is 100% identical to um, this one, showing that we are keeping to the specs in a book with the spacing. It's kind of uh, remarkable that it's aligned so perfectly. Uh, tube size a little bit different because I'm pretty sure Zvonimir used uh, metric tubing over there in Europe and we're using standard and that's why the, the little difference in the tube diameter but um, not much for, even though no but for the most part this 
th these would probably work, you know, mm -hmm. little adjustments these work on these mm -hmm. tubes. So this is kind of a testament to showing that um, if anybody wonders if we're sticking to uh, the spec of what Lakovsky did, the answer is yes. And here's the proof right there. <laughs> kind of interesting. So you can see our, our antennas, we're using the strips to keep them more um, rugged and it's the only way we can do any kind of real numbers in uh, production. But you can see ours are uh, clear coated here. Um, this will keep them nice and shiny for a long time. All you got to do is just wipe them down with um, you know, rubbing alcohol or something. And then these are the uh, European ones, uh, uh, uncoated. So these will get a little bit of pitting and um, fingerprint gre grease marks and that kind of stuff harder to keep clean and they'll oxidize over time it won't really affect the uh, uh, performance of it but the way that we're doing ours will keep uh, nice and shiny for for years and years actually should stay looking brand new for almost oh, it should never change yeah. no. and that powder coat is so tough here hold, hold it up with the oh, 